Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. Today, Diane and I are taking this double kayak out, dropping some crab rings. We're gonna do an overnight, go see what other kind of seafood we might be able to find. Join us. turn around. I was just driving and I'm not gonna look at you. Hands free baby. I'm looking at the road. But I just saw a tree loaded with oyster mushrooms. Now I gotta walk up and take a look. Boom. Oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms. Well I didn't film uh, cutting them but uh, check out what I got. That's about a solid two pounds of oyster mushrooms off of one tree. There's not an insect in the bunch. Anyway, I stopped for a moment. This is not why I'm out here today. Finding a whole, <laughs> a whole bunch of oyster mushrooms was just a perk. So yeah, let's go. Got my sweet life preserver. <laughs> Safety first, people. Got a beautiful girl. Ready to rock. Boom. Got about two miles to go. It's gonna get dark. Try to paddle and find our way to a secret camping spot. Shh. Anyway, um, probably won't turn on the light until maybe a little later if we do some foraging. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see this, just beyond the kayak paddle here. These are all mussels in here. They're pretty camouflaged. Let me see if I can get up a little closer. Babe, can you shine your light right there? There you go. Look at all these guys. Yeah, these are Muscles. Very barnacly, but uh, they're gonna be good. Look at that. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. There's mussels all over this rock. <laughs> and we've already seen what? Like a whole bunch of fish cruising by? Mm -hmm. Crabs. We've seen a couple crabs cruising by, so we're gonna drop some crab hoops. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a spooky night. <laughs> we are gonna go out and uh, do a little foraging from the kayak and we're gonna do it at night. But in the meantime, we're gonna grab these mussels and uh, find a place to camp. That is an oyster. That's a native oyster. Pretty darn cool. And now, we're gonna eat it. <sighs> yeah, baby. Native oyster, 35 a day. Mm. Oh, baby. <laughs> Darling, would you like to do the honors? the verdict? <sighs> Super fresh. Yeah? I can't believe I ate it alive. <laughs> oh my god, that's so yummy. <laughs> Good. So you try and go in through the umbo, which is the clasp here, but obviously it's not easy. Kind of give it a rocking motion. And we want to get in there and toward the front rather than the back. That's where that adductor muscle is. So into it right there. And these guys will never be as big as, you know, your introduced species. But, uh, hey, native oysters. Oh my god. Well, that was a lucky find. We came out here looking for mussels, but hey, there you go. I'll take it. <laughs> is that even? It is? Oh my. Yeah, look at that one. Okay. Uh, so we found the honey hole. Is that one? Babe, that one is huge. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You guys see this? It's just that, like, hang on, let me focus. That furrowed, stitched kind of edge to the shell. That's the only thing you can really see to identify. Babe, you have to get that one. That one looks awesome. Mm -hmm. 
We've done this before. <laughs> did you used to get this when you were a kid? No. No, I only did this for the first time last year. Uh -oh. oh my god, you're bleeding, babe. Just a little bit. Nicely done, Diane. That one's perfect. I'm eating it. Good? Mm. For me. Mm -hmm. Baby. <laughs> oh my god. So native oysters, um, you know, they're not very common. So 35 a day, that's the limit. We probably took, what, 15 between the two of us? No way, we took probably 10. 10 between the two of us? Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't probably take 35 of these every time. But for the most part, I would probably take no more than about, yeah, 10, 15. And then, uh, yeah, just let them uh, be healthy and rebound and grow and all that. We're gonna go have a fire. Ah, this one right here is sea beans, also known as samphire or pickleweed. It is edible and it's quite good. Nice texture. You can use it kind of like asparagus. So maybe we'll grab some and throw it in our pot. Let's take a close look at it. Pretty distinct. It's going to be growing in these sort of marsh slow energy kind of environments nice kind of segments going up the the fruit i guess you could call it it's really not the fruit at all but that's what you eat sort of the succulent leaf so right behind me right here is called coyote brush coyote brush is uh it's got these little fuzzy kind of uh, seed pods this time of year that'll kind of erupt and start flying through the air to bring its seeds to new locations that fluff makes a really good fire starter. Um, in addition to that, burns pretty good, pretty easy. It's not a long burning wood, but it gets going pretty quick because it's uh, relatively soft. So I was using some of this last night with the fire, um, but I made sure not to touch this brush right behind me because check this out. Growing among this beautiful coyote brush was this. I don't know if you can see these, like this guy right here. That is dormant poison oak. And there's poison oak all through here. And if that ends up in your firewood when you're burning that, that poison oak smoke will go into your lungs. You breathe that and you get poison oak in your bloodstream. It goes systemic and it is terrible. You probably have to go to the hospital for it. So keep your eye out. Yeah, as always, it's just a shame about the view. That gray there, that's clay. If you guys want to see us make some stuff out of the clay that we dig here, leave a comment. We're gonna go out, dig some wild clay and make all kinds of cool stuff. All right, this one here is horsetail. They make excellent, um, sponges for cleaning your pans. Just found some more ocean treasure. This is a bumper. Um, you hang it over the edge of your boat and then when your boat gets too close to the dock or too close to another boat it'll bounce off this instead of your boat so it doesn't do damage. But it's got this little hole here. It's totally sealed so it's nice and uh, you know watertight and it's hollow so it's uh, buoyant which means I can use it as a crab float. I'm just gonna put my go ID number on there. Diane's just waking up. I'm gonna head back.
this week on Check Out What My Brother Made Me. Check out what my brother made me. Hand carved black walnut kooksa. Started getting a little brighter, so I had to switch to my, my other hat. I hear people say, oh, you know, it's a coffee filter, it's biodegradable, just leave it. It's not the point. The point isn't whether or not it's going to break down. The point is, does the next person who comes, even a couple days later, have to see all the garbage that you left behind, even though it's biodegradable? Just pack out what you pack in. That's all it takes. Happy New Year, people. 2019 kicked butt. I'm ready. I'm ready for 2020 also. So today, we're going to do a bowling knot. Very, very simple. So, we're going to make a loop with the main line here. And the idea is, a rabbit comes out of its hole goes around the tree, sees a fox, gets scared, runs back down into his hole. That's what it looks like. And then cinch this up, and that's it. Super duper simple. Really good climbing knot, and one of the beauties of this is you can really horse on it, and then afterwards, comes apart super easily. So what I usually do is I'll run one bullen on something like this and then I'll just do another half inch or two over the top just to ensure that it's staying in place. And that's it. Let's go drop some crab pots. There's a chore there. Let's go let this go down slowly. See if we can find the bottom. Need a little bit of slack at the surface, so I just hit the bottom. We've got about yeah, 12 feet to spare. If we were in the open ocean, I'd be using the float twice that size, and I would want more um, than this. Or if the current was really picking up, because it can lay down and pull your float underwater. That's good. This would be fine for a day like this. We figured while we're letting the crab pots soak, we may as well just cruise along and look at some of the rocky area, even though it's pretty high tide. There might be something that we see in here, a rock crab or maybe uh, some limpets or something like that. That red seaweed right there, that's nori. Diane's out there finding cool shells, looking for rock crabs. She's got her waders. We ordered waders, supposedly in size 15. They came in size nine. So I'm still in blue jeans. <laughs> I'm gonna move some rocks. Hey, I'm not gonna hurt you. This is a, he's only got one claw. Super cool. Totally trying to get me. Striped shore crab. Take a look at this guy. Check out the colors on that. Isn't that beautiful? He's like, I will pinch you if I feel threatened at all. <laughs> yeah, so these guys do fight with each other. Sometimes they'll lose claws. Um, they're so darn cool. He's probably gonna pinch the hell out of me right now. Let's put you back. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's like ready to pinch. Ready to pinch. There you go. Yeah, even though he's small, those things do hurt real bad when they pinch you. And so this was the rock that that crab was under. Um, I just put it back. It keeps him safe. Let's keep looking. Some people are like, why do I care? Why do I want to keep it safe? I'm out here to get food. Yeah, I'm out here to get food too, but you don't need to be a dick about it. <laughs> so this one right here is called Fucus. Uh, it's a type of bladder rack. Check it out. Got this really cool branched pattern and these little floats these little air bladders and that's what allows it to float on the water i believe that's because it's a photosynthesizer um, so it needs to stay up higher in the water column but i could be completely wrong if you know otherwise let me know 
probably one of the more important parts for foragers is that it's edible. It's not my all-time favorite, but it's not bad. And these seaweeds are super nutritious. They got all kinds of vitamins, minerals, riboflavin. What the heck is riboflavin? I don't know, apparently a lot of seaweeds have it. We've got a spring coming down out of the rock here, and it looks like there's even a little granite intrusion in this sandstone, which is crazy. Ah, San Andreas Fault. That makes sense. We have two neighboring geological formations that are crossing right here, San Andreas Fault. That makes sense. Anyway, in the fault, we have a lot of cracks and we have water that's dripping down. So this is fresh water, fresh water spring. So this would be one of those places if you get stuck on the beach, obviously you can't drink seawater. If you do, drink even brackish water, which has a saline content, a high saline content. It'll make you go crazy. You start hallucinating and then yeah, you have all kinds of other health problems that it'll eventually kill you. But these seeps are one of the most important um, local sources of clean water. Um, you know for sure it hasn't gone through like along a, a creek or something where it could go through a dead animal carcass or something like this. this. This water is pretty safe. I always filter my water or boil my water, but if I had to in a pinch, this would be the water that I would drink rather than anything out of any creeks. So obviously it's not going to be bacteria free um, with all the algae, but you can see this is just fresh water dripping. Sometimes people ask me where I learned all this stuff. Well, this is where I grew up in a cave. <laughs> Yeah, back in there, you can see it, wild strawberry, right there. Yeah, the fruit from that, amazing. I picked a bunch of those in uh, Mongolia. I spent a couple summers over there. Those wild strawberries, they're like the size of a pea or a grape. They're so, so good though. I, I promise you, I did not stage this. That's the crab I just found. <laughs> what are the odds? Show Diane. Hey babe, I caught a crab. Check it out. Sorry, baby. I'm in trouble. This is pampas grass or pompous grass, I don't know, whatever you call it. Non native, terrible stuff, but this part here does burn really well. So we're gonna take some to get our fire started because it's not native and it's not supposed to be here. Look how fine that is. And it'll dry out really, really quickly, even on a damp day. Oh, Couple what babies. The these are all dungies too. What? Yeah, those are all dungies. They're just little darling dungies, aren't you? You little babies. Pretty cool though. But they're just so cute. Okay, tell your brothers and sisters. I think we're gonna pull it, bring it in. Yeah. And then cook. Yeah. like a salty cucumber or something. That's really good. Mm. Well, maybe that's why they call it pickleweed. <laughs> Check out what my brother made Diane. It's this uh, birch bark container. You can see it's like sewn into place there. Then glued with birch tar. It's got the little plug. Inside we've got Strike Anywhere matches. And there's some fat wood in here as well which is pine that's ultra impregnated with resin. So it's crazy, crazy flammable, works great in storms. We'll save that for another day. So the last time I did this with Strike Anywhere Matches, I got a comment that the real way to do this is to strike it on your teeth, if you want to be a man about it. And uh, so here we go. Apparently I'm not a man. How are you doing it? 
Yeah, the way I used to do it when I was a kid. No, I wouldn't do it that way. Why not? Like sideways? Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. My baby was right. So in order to be a man, you gotta listen to your woman. Ooh. Man, that pampas grass is some flammable stuff, huh? Oh my gosh. Get some ferns on here to start drying out. Cool. So those are ready, and now we can do the soup. It's like BCD tofu, like that Korean uh, kimchi soup kind of soup starter. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we're gonna add seafood, some seawater, some udon, some mushrooms, Green onions, enoki. So we added a block of noodles. We're adding the green onion. Happy New Year, folks. Seafood udon with uh, wild foraged oyster mushrooms, foraged pickle weed, not foraged bok choy, but it's delicious. Not foraged enoki, but it's delicious. Got our mussels and uh, enough talk. Let's do this. Pickle weed first. good spicy pickle weed retains its crunch it's just good I really like that These mushrooms are super yummy, actually. Just want some broth. I'm so happy with this meal, baby. Mm -hmm. mm. You are correct. Those oyster mushrooms came out so good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really good. You're a good cook. Oh yeah, I just remembered that. We're kind of recreating one of our first dates. Kind of. Kind of. Even though we did it with poke pulling, catching eels, and it was eel and rock crab udon. But, you know, kind of a, a tribute now that we've been together for three years. I swear, sometimes I think I'm just challenged with uh, using chopsticks and then I try to use a spoon and I still fail and I'm like, no, I'm just not good. This channel's been around for what, two years now. 2019 was awesome. 2020, we're looking forward to sharing all kinds of new adventures, including going to Peru, doing some Peruvian ceviche. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for watching. Give us a like, subscribe, comment. We always love hearing back from you. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. <laughs> we just realized 
We just hit 10,000 subscribers. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. See you in 2020. Good. Yeah, I am so challenged when it comes to any kind of eating utensil. Don't worry, honey. Just sit back and relax. I got it. So we'll do that with some muscles and see if we can find some other... Oop. Wait, there's still beard in this one. Mm. Let's see. If I grab a hold of it right here. Right there. And then I just... Ha! <laughs> <laughs>